Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, back from Chicago, and we're kicking off today with the 2023 Topps Chrome Hobby Dual Case Break. 24 boxes total, pick your team six, and we have another pick your team loaded up on jazbeescasebreaks.com. All card ship, a lot of great stuff here, and it's, uh, it's a longer break, so let's get the show on the road. Big thanks to this group for making it happen, and we will do an autograph recap plus any lower numbered cards and other special cards towards the end. Thanks everybody for making it happen. Matt with Last Bot Mojo with my Dodgers. A lot of people in on it. Anybody in this break watching live? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so this is the, the hobby case right there. And this doesn't angle up as well as I want it to. I've got to figure that out. But hobby case right there. <clears throat> well, the National was a lot of fun. It turned out to be, even with our abbreviated schedule, it turned out to be a lot busier than I thought, um, which was good. I mean, we ended up kind of talking to a bunch of people. Did we not? It's not in our inventory system. But there it is, 2023 Topps Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition. One Chrome autograph per box on average. <clears throat> Richard's here, I, I would love to see some train whistles. Jan got all of the Chronicles cards. Nice, homegrooms, very good, excellent, good to hear. John Samuelson in this rig, yeah, I saw you with a few teams in here. Good to see you. Yeah, the National was a lot of fun. It helped Nick out a lot with a lot of card buying. He's got a ton of cards that he picked up at the National. If you go to jazbeescasebreaks.com, there's, uh, there's a blog area there. And I haven't done my, my final update from the National, but you can see some, some uh, my National Notebook blog posts. You can get a, a little, a small window into what we were doing. Met with the Fanatics people. Had a nice meeting with them. Kicking off Fanatics Live, which will be starting more in earnest, I think, when the uh, when my week resets on uh, on Saturday or on Sunday. Honestly, I think is our first of many Fanatics Live breaks. So we'll be on Fanatics Live probably seven nights. Seven nights? No, at least. A good chunk of the week. Some of the days will be me, some of the days will be some of the others, but but yeah. When we, once we get a concrete schedule, we'll share that later this week. BW is here. Mets and Pirates. I see you, Brian, thank you. Good luck. It's a long break, ladies and gentlemen. I know it takes Jason about hour 40 minutes I'm not as fast as Jason. It'll probably take me closer to two hours, but <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll grind through it as best as possible. Here's box one. I did not get any national promo stuff for myself, unfortunately. Here's our autograph, Nolan Jones, 136 out of 250. Purple Mountain Majesty going to the Rockies. That'll be for Tim, the Rocks. Little color match there, good start. We got a gold O'Neill Cruz, four out of 50. That's, a, that's one for BW, the Pirates. First of many, I hope. But yeah, no national promo stuff for me, Jen. Just didn't have time. Busy, busy buying stuff, making deals, keeping our eye out for some good stuff for the shop and for future hit packs and big hit express products. So that's what we've been, that's what, what's been keeping us busy. So no, no time for too many personal stuff. Here's a Jordan Walker refractor for the Cardinals. 
That will be for that will be for Steve. And here's a Corbin Carroll Prism parallel for John and the Diamondbacks. Nice. Do I PC anything? No. But I have to tell you, walking the floor at the National far more than I ever have in any previous National, because usually we've just been working morning to night, just breaking. But in doing that, I have to say that I'm starting to get interested in, in starting some kind of, I mean, over the years, I've purchased, there's Dalton Varsho for the uh, Blue Jays, that's going to go to Kevin. but. Over the years, I've, I've gathered some stuff here and there, but it's really not a, not really a carefully curated collection at all. So it's just a random box I get here and there, or blah, 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 blah. And so I do have stuff laying around. I've got, I got some extra stuff that I need to, need to clean out, that's for sure. But... You know, naturally being in the hobby, you're going to tend to gather stuff, but... But I am now starting to think about, should I start collecting something a little more seriously? So, I think so far, I'm kind of going with, yeah, maybe some not, well, one non-sport, Grizzlebees, I'm thinking, uh... Some Star Wars stuff. I'm kind of looking at graded Star Wars stuff. PSA 10, kind of add that to the personal collection. I picked up something from 2021 Topps Chrome Star Wars Galaxy. There's like three cards in the base set that look like kind of old World War II propaganda photos. So I wanted to collect those, try to find some PSA 10s of that, and some F1. I'm a fan of McLaren and Lando Norris, so maybe I, I bought actually a card right out of the storeroom floor, got a rookie sapphire of Lando Norris. It's a short print too, I think, and that was a PSA 10. So I think it'd probably mostly be PSA 10. I might, I don't know how speculative I'm going to be on stuff though. So that's so that those are a couple of cars. I also have a this is something I bought a couple of years ago, but I, I also have from Topps Chrome Baseball. Uh, artist uh, Kendrick Lamar in a Dodgers uniform, Dodgers jersey and a hat, throwing out the first pitch. He's got a big smile on his face. He's like a kid again. It's a refractor, and it's a PSA 10. So I have one of those sitting around. A nice Adley Rutschman Titans insert. Yeah, Gem Mint Joe. I also uh, I also bought uh, at the. So I, I'm sure some of you are familiar with uh, this is your free plug. I'm sure everyone's familiar with uh, those Zion card ca carrying cases. They come in various sizes and they're actually pretty awesome. Here's a bow nailer. Orange Wave autograph, six out of 25 for the Guardians. That's gonna go to John Samuelson. Cleveland, this is for you. And, and for John. And, uh, and so I bought a little case for myself, for those graded cards. I guess I just can't just leave them laying around the house. But um, I'm gonna start loading them up. It's just this, I think it's like the smallest kind of carrying case that, that they offer. So we'll start there. 
we'll see what happens. Yeah, I saw, Jan, someone with uh, the, the person I bought that Star Wars card from also had the C-3PO uh, error card, PSA 10. He had selling at $40,000. He also had various other cards from that famous set, from that 1977 set, um, graded at PSA 10. I think the cheapest one was like $15,000. Oh, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna need a U-Haul. Just that case alone. Surprisingly, not, not as many, not as much F1 stuff there as I thought there was. Yeah, we're just chit-chatting about that now, Daniel. If you go to uh, jazbeescasebreaks.com, at the top of the menu, next to all of the sports, there's a section called Jaspies HQ, where I've been blogging about the uh, National. You can get some deets there. I gotta do one, a couple more posts just to put a bow on that National. I gotta do a Saturday post, do all that. But anyway, a lot of fun. Busier than I thought it would be, even though our trip was abbreviated. Saw a lot of cool stuff. I have no idea who won Jordan's car at the National. I think that was happening. They opened up, ladies and gentlemen, another 200,000 square feet of space, and it was still packed. And very hot. I feel like we, we sweated off some pounds, too. Uh, Oliver was asking earlier, um, I think, I think it was Oliver who was asking earlier about the uh, about what we ate. We ate a lot of good food there. We, we one night we went to the Capitol Grill, which is sort of a fancy place. I had a nice steak. Um, other place that we went to, we went to. Let's see we go. I think we went to we went to an Italian place called uh, Carmine's. That was really good. I had a, uh, a clam linguine with a spicy red sauce, which was awesome. Yeah, the Capitol Grill was it did end up being a little pricey. There's rice two ranked to ninety nine. We didn't have to pay for it, though, so. <laughs> um, we, were, we were taken out to dinner by a business associate. It was very nice of him. Um, Carmine's, yeah, that, that was pretty good. Where else? Did, we went to, so there's, I guess there's a Harry Carey's restaurant downtown that's more of pub food, bar food kind of place, but there's one in Rosemont that they dub an Italian steakhouse. They're Shea Langliers. And so there I had a, uh, a shrimp scampi linguine in a white wine, white sauce. Very, very light sauce, a lot of garlic, a lot of deliciousness there. It's pretty awesome. Some good food tucked away in Rosemont. It was impossible to get into Gibson's and impossible to get into Giordano's. We definitely wanted the Giordano's pizza experience. But I think every time we, we got around to being like, oh yeah, we're hungry. Yeah, Tommy, I'll tell you why. It, it was 60 to 90 minute wait every time. I forget if they do reservations, but I think th those are, by the time we call early in the afternoon, they're all booked up. And then if you just walk in, they're like 60 to 90 minute wait. We always kind of forget to be like, oh, we should put in a reservation or we should this or that. So no, it's shockingly no pizza on the, uh, on the docket. John is from Chicago. Giordano's isn't that great for deep dish. Close to the convention center, though. So, so what's the spot? Is this like a is this like a Pat and Gino's? I think is that those are those the cheesesteak places in Philly? 
Is it like one of those? I guess I feel like there's a lot of deep dish pizza places around. You curious about it? It'll, uh, that will vary. Depending on operation to operation. Yeah, a lot of people are doing it. Everyone, I, I feel like everyone has a different structure to how they compensate their breakers. Most places, I guess some people may do hourly, some people may have a fixed, I mean, I don't know, honestly. So it's gonna vary from place to place and depending on the size and the scope of their operation. I would imagine most most places are a, a commission type structure. I think we're on like a little bit of a blend. I don't know, I don't do that part of the business, Daniel, but I think it's usually a blend of, of hourly and commission. There's Spencer Steer, he's having a nice season. 31 out of 50, gold wave for the Reds. That'll be for David. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's better than digging ditches, Daniel. But I, I don't know if, if it's as lucrative as people think it is. Sometimes some of these group breakers, uh, there's a little bit of a, uh, ooh, there's a nice Gunnar Henderson, 209 out of 499. I think there are some guys out there that try to, you know, try to, you know, buy expensive shoes and watches and try to play like they're, uh, they're a baller. Nice one for the O's, Sean Maddock. They're in it more for the, hey, I'm a live streamer as opposed to, you know, so I don't know. Who knows? It all varies, Every, you know, depending on what kind of wholesale prices you can get. It's all the thing, how much volume can you do or break or whatnot. A lot of people forget about all the, all the overhead that's there. They just think, oh, you break some cards, you ship them out. Done, right? It's not that easy. Did I try that hot dog place that cooks their fries with duck fat? No, I did not, Tommy. But I remember that sounding really delicious. We just didn't really have time to... I mean, a lot of, lot of people think it's a... Uh, a lot of people think it's a fun trip, but we're on the working side of the trip, not on, like, the visiting side of the trip, so... It's not as... Not as much time to, to, do, to do all the fun stuff that we would like. We would have been able to carve out a... Uh, their Cubs were in Wrigley. We would have been able to maybe carve out a Wrigley game if possible. But we were usually going to trade nights and meeting up with some old customers and shaking hands, kissing babies. That's right, Grizzle Bees. We make this business, running this business look easy here. But it's really not. A lot of people to pay, a lot of stuff, to, a lot of materials to buy. Gilo, what's going on? The trip was great. Yeah, we, I was just, we've just been kind of talking about the trip. I've been writing some, uh, some blog posts, Gilo, if you want to check that out, jaspiescasebreaks.com. Click Jaspies HQ, see the blog post there. Still need to write a Saturday night post and then a little wrap up post. But yeah, overall is good. Busier than I thought it would be, hotter than I thought it was gonna be. You know.
Ah, who's Grizzle? We had to let him go, Grizzlebees. It's Josh Young Prism. And a Royce Lewis Pink Speckle. It's to 350. Yeah, he was, he was not a good person. Yeah, it, it ha I think in GLO, I don't know if you've been keeping track of what, what was going on at the National itself. Um, but uh, extremely hot. Just outside temperature was extremely hot. And I think the, the National had record number of people going through its doors. There's Tyler Freeman, 115 out of 499. Autograph, refractor autograph for John Samuelson. And the Guardians. Cleveland, this is for you. So, um, so yeah. So, and the air conditioning didn't seem like it was it was operating really well, and it was just the temperature. The indoor temperature was uh, was awful. I I heard I we were hearing rumors that someone had someone had bought a thermometer and put it on their on their at their booth. And that it looked like there was like that it had allegedly had gone up over 90 degrees indoor temperature. You've watched times and you've barely seen any tigers hits. Hmm. Maybe if if the checklist for the tigers isn't that big, they can get a little tough sometimes. But I think, thankfully, the, the price will should reflect that. So let's hopefully we can find some here. Yeah, I don't know how the Midwest does it, Gilo. It was there were some thunderstorms at night. Saw a lot of lightning. Saw it, it was you know we don't really have thunderstorms in Southern California in the summer. Just in in general. But yeah, a lot of good food, a lot of late nights, a lot of, lot of crazy trade nights. Um, yeah. The, the Lowe's Hotel down there, for the last couple nationals in Chicago, the Lowe's Hotel has become known as the place where you go to after the national to go, to, to go there for a trade night. Like people just set up in the lobby and the hallways and the and everything, and then just sit down on the ground, set up cards in front of them, and they just start. Uh, um, they just they just hang out there and start trading, doing all that sort of stuff. And it was um, it was pretty wild. The first night we went there, Nick got some deals done, and it was pretty crowded. Then the second night we went there. And it was twice as full. And eventually, the cops came and, and broke it up. It's 157 out of 299, Vinny Pascatino. Speaking of Gilo's Royals, that goes to Zach. And then there was a, there was a rumor that that someone had, and these are these are all crazy rumors that get started, but uh, that someone had uh, defecated in the corner of of one of these areas. I don't know how true that is, but I think that precipitated the cops being called and the the party being broke up quite quickly after that, allegedly. We got Jared Young for the Cubs. That will be for Spencer and the Chicago Cubs.
Sandy Alcantara, 24 out of 99. Marlins, that'll be for John. And onwards to the next box. So we are about, we are halfway through this two case break. Could have been, could have been breaker hype rows, causing a ruckus. But it's just, it wasn't even breaker, but it's like buyers too. There's a lot of, a lot of guys, a lot of, a lot of guys out there, a lot of people just there just to collect. And they're bringing their giant like Zion cases and other flight cases and stuff to, uh, to travel and bring all their goods and wares and pretty wild. I can't believe, it still blows my mind that they added a whole other room. They added a whole other 200,000 square foot section Filled it with a bunch more tables, and um, filled it with a bunch more tables, and and it was and it was still packed. Everywhere was packed. I couldn't believe it. A lot of breakers, I think we're still there. Not as many as before. I feel like every year there's fewer and fewer breakers in that breaker pavilion. I wanna say some guys just just set up a booth there and just end up just giving away swag. I guess do more outreach type stuff instead of actually breaking at the booth. A lot of different breakers, a lot of different breaker names. A lot of people trying their hand at this, uh, at this crazy hobby. Met a few people that are, that are customers of ours. Um, We usually meet up with uh, <clears throat> Steve Locke and Brittany. We usually come out to the National, hang out with them. It was Taylor Ward to 150. I think he took a hit by pitch to the face. I think he's out for a little bit. Angels, Steven. The Nolan Gorman prism will go to Steve G. Brian Vornberg stopped by. What's all, what always surprises me at the National when people come up to us, ooh, look at this. Let's talk about this first. Ultraviolet Shohei Otani. These generally fall one per case, or maybe even shorter than that. That's Stephen Carney with the Angels. There you go, very nice. Do these fall exactly one per case? Bang. Set that up right there. And the autograph is Bo Naylor. 131 out of 250. Cleveland, this is for you. And John Tamison. Did I run to you? Nice. Run in, ran into Dan, ran into Brian Vornberg, ran into uh, some of you may remember Z Howe, who buys into a lot of our basketball breaks. Ran into that. Uh, ran into, oh, I was going to say before the Otani interrupted me, I'm, I'm always surprised at how many people are just, just, hang, just viewers. A lot of, uh, there were a couple parents. Uh, with their kids. I, I remember w one guy and his uh, young son were there and he said specifically, his son was like, I gotta go see Jaspi. So I spent a little time with him, gave him some Jaspi stickers and everything. And I mean, he couldn't have, couldn't have been more than like nine years old. 
eight years old maybe. Um, but that was really cool. Like, I'm surprised how many people are just like, were just like, just kind of tap my shoulder really quick and just like a quick, hey, Nick and Joe, love watching you guys, been watching you guys for years. And, um, you know, one breaker pulled me aside and was like, hey, you're the reason why, um, you're the reason why I got into break? He breaks a lot of Disney stuff. I think he was a, a customer years ago as well, but, but, uh, but yeah, he was like, he, he was like, it's crazy. It's, it's just crazy to see, I guess. And then I, then I realized, oh gosh, we've been doing this for a long time, huh? Yeah, Gilo, you got to go to the National, man. Next year, um, no, I appreciate it, Dan. Next time, bother me. <laughs> you, can, you can bother me for even longer than that. But, um, I suppose so. I, I mean, I, I just, I don't think of it like that. It still feels like we're still in year one or two. But Daniel, we've been doing this for nine years, almost 10. So, yeah, appreciate everybody who said hello, especially at the National. What about that little closet space we were in before the store? Oh, yeah, in the early years, we were breaking out of uh, the garage, the mix house. We were always coy about the location. We were always saying it was like a hidden location in, in, deep in the heart of the South Bay of Los Angeles. But, but no, we were, we were just in their garage. We, those are the days where, where where we posted and sorted and shipped our own breaks and all that sort of stuff. And, uh... Chris Bryant, black and white. Yeah, I got, I got, I got strong hands, Dan. Nice Miguel Vargas. Hopefully he gets back on track. 153 out of 199. Aqua Wave autograph for Matt from the Dodgers. Last spot mojo strikes again. Correct. Yeah, the garage. The early years were the garage. And then the when we got a uh, when we moved into our store, it was just a small, like what, 800 square foot store in like a sort of like a business center that collected a lot of, like a commercial center that collects a lot of like office buildings. Not even not even like a strip mall or anything like that, but a nice Wander Franco to 3.99. And so we were in that little space where we had a studio and then another small little office and shipping area over there. And we were there for a number of years until we moved into our current location. Which sometimes we feel like we feel like we're running out of space. Which is kind of crazy to say. I don't think we ever would have thought to say that. In fact, when we first moved in here. I think we were like, it's not enough space. I'm <laughs> sorry, Brad, I'll pull some Riley Greens for you. Usually our shipping team kind of takes care of that part of it, especially, especially for the, uh, for these long breaks. Sorry, it's already gonna be a two hour break. 
If I start sleeving Riley Green, then I'm gonna start sleeving everybody else, and then this suddenly, every extra person I have to take care of will suddenly turn into a uh, two and a half, three hour break. But the next one I spot, I'll, I'll set one aside for you. But. I think really, for the purposes of this, for Topps Chrome Baseball, I think it's like Corbin Carroll, Jordan Walker are probably the only two guys that are really getting the extra treatment from the outset. Some Rushmans as well. box from the first case. We still have, still have that second case to go over there. There's a Riley Green. How about that? And that mid-80s design. Refractor as well for Brad and the Tigers. Boom. It's J.D. Martinez to 350. Tristan Casas Refractor. Now I'm spotting all these guys. Suppose, yeah, Josh Young refractors, our team will probably sort out as well. The JD Martinez goes to the Dodgers, that'll be for Matt. And our autograph is this guy, Eguy Rosario. Does Riley Green have ink in this? We never had a space near LAX, though. John, are you confusing us with someone else? The original space, Redondo Beach, not near an airport. There's Willie Ademis to 125. Yeah, we were, we were, we were deep in Redondo Beach. And then we moved slightly north to Hermosa Beach. This is as close as we've been to, to, to LAX. We're not too far from LAX, though. Yeah, you might, you might be able to get some deals on commercial real estate. But yeah, I mean, where we were, John, I mean, I think you can probably take a, no traffic, you can probably take a 20 minute ride share right down to, uh, right down to our shop. I mean, we're not right by LAX, but we're close enough. You'd be surprised at how many, I'm always surprised at how many people, especially like international, like people that are going back to like uh, Australia or something like that. Or sometimes people traveling to Hawaii, they'll have longer layovers at LAX. So we hear a lot of people who go, yeah, I had a, I had a, uh, I don't know, some seven hour layover, so I'm, so I wanted to jump down at Jaspi's for a couple hours before I go back, we hear that a lot. But we're still fairly close to, close to the airport though. Very, very easy to visit us if you'd like. We've got a, a Hampton Inn just north of us. Ride share, all, a lot, lot of ride share options.
But yeah, Gila was mentioning earlier, yeah, you definitely gotta go to the Nashville, man. That's just makes sense if if you're if you're if you're trying to trying to get into that world a little bit, that's definitely definitely a place where you gotta go. Let's save another Riley Green for Brad here. Let's try to find a refractor. Numbered cards. We got a Brand Lau for the Rays, photo negative. There's a Logan Ohati, 149 out of 299, purple speckle autograph for the Angels, Stephen Carney. He was on his way to a nice season before that injury, so it's probably something to someone to hold on to. Yeah, you got to hit the mecca. I mean, if you think those local car shows are strong, you should see. You will be can't do it in a day either. I almost guarantee you that. J.D. Martinez to 399. Oh, nice. Are you setting up a table, Gabe? Be a vendor this time. So you're actually setting up a table. Um. Hmm. Are you uh, are you strictly selling or will you be buying? Because people will ask. Some places are cool enough to rent like uh, to rent out like actual glass like showcases. So maybe maybe get one of those so you can put your cards inside a nice little showcase. You will buy, but not when I'm getting much. Bring a lot of cash to buy, whatever your budget is. Be prepared. Uh, do you have a price gun? You can, uh, you can bag up all of the cars that you want to sell and put a, and on top of that plastic team bag, you can put a uh, put a price on it. Nick has a Nick, Nick has a, a little a little role when he's buying. But he generally he generally unless he knows the person he'll generally pass on people that don't have their cards priced. Because he feels like, I don't know, he feels like uh, they can just make up prices whenever they feel like it. There's Jake McCarthy, 31 out of 99. You have a lot of sealed product. There's Jake McCarthy, Green Wave. John in the Diamondbacks.
feel like a lot of people had sealed box at the National that were priced a wee bit too high. And we got a Louis Varlin. Rookie auto for the Twins. That's going to go to Michael from the Minnesota Twins. So, sorry, camera. There you go. Yeah, the autofocus is being a little goofy today. Usually it's not, usually it's, it's a little quicker and I, maybe it's trying to look at that Otani. I'm just excited about that Otani. Here's Bregman to 350. That's gonna go to the Astros. That'll be for Jared. Yeah, we got a new camera. We got a, still, still trying to dial it in. But yeah, price those cards, get those prices, and then everyone is gonna ask you, do you have room on it? You know, so kind of build that in as well. All right, last box of the first case. I guess just be patient and have fun, enjoy it. Talk to people, you know, get to, get to know people, you know, in your, in your area, in your industry. And just to make, just even, even for just networking purposes. Oh, when I'm shuffling through, yeah, maybe it's not just focusing fast enough. We'll dial it in. We'll dial it in, Brett. We're still working on it. It is exhausting. That's part of the game, though. Just, just that's what I'm saying. Just accept the fact that everyone's going to ask, "Hey, do you have room on this?" You know, do you have room on this? What do you take for this? You know. Um, Comp, everyone's asking, everyone's comp this, comp that. Everyone fires up their phone and go, well, the last one sold for. So geez, just be prepared for that as well. You kind of have to do your research beforehand as well and be like, and be like, well, yeah, but that was one out of the 10 cards that were sold and the other 10 were at this price. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to kind of work with people on that. Sometimes you'll get some uh, you'll get some precocious kids, teenagers, who will come up to you. That'll try to try to get you with the comps. Be prepared, Gilo. And the rest of it's just gut instinct. Just, just it's like, hey, is this a card? Do you do you think you, the value of the player is going to go up? Maybe you don't have to move on that player. Maybe you think the value is going to go down. Maybe you move that player a little bit sooner. Had a player that you've been sitting on for a while. You just want to move it, get it out of, get it out of your inventory. You've got to do that. We got a Xander Bogarts, 92 out of 99, green speckle for the Padres. I feel like I've seen, I forget. Gotta, I'll ask Nick if I remember. Or next time you're in the stream and you, you see or hear Nick in the background, let me know. I can let you know what, what app he uses. Another Xander Bogarts, not number, but a prison parallel. But yeah, everyone, there, there's a few apps that everyone, that a lot of people seem to use. And here is, here is a tiger, Brad. Tiger uppercut. Jermaine Palacios, rookie auto for Motor City.
There you go, Brad. And we've got an orange Mookie Betts, 21 out of 25. You know what? I think that's what Nick uses, card ladder. That, that sounds familiar. I'm pretty sure that's what he uses to quickly uh, to do some quick research whenever he's looking for stuff. All right. So I'm going to set this group of autographs aside here. Let's move these parallels here. Let's start. Michael, Michael was at the National on not not work not a work trip for Michael. But him and his fam went out there. What what cool stuff did you see, Michael, at the National? Um, what cool buys did you make? I bought a Conor McGregor second glove. Oh, you did. Yeah. Nice. Um, I bought. I bought a lot of stuff. Uh, Personal stuff in the last. I got a Acuna signed baseball. Nice. Uh, I got the Dover Air card. The what Air card? Air card. Like with that note. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, nice, classic. Yeah. Um, got a, a Shohei Bowman Chrome rookie. Ooh. Yeah. Um, J. Rod Bowman first, and I got a KD with the auto PSA tab. But I ended up flipping it. Like 30 minutes later, because I got to get off the floor. Wow. Yeah. It's wheeling and dealing out there. Trying. These packs look different. What does that mean? It's got a little sil silver strip right here. No silver strip right there. Hot box? <laughs> Jan, yeah, I, I will look into that top Star Wars living set. You got the tops email blast today and that Star Wars Chrome about to come out, yes. That does look that look does look pretty nice. Get anything else besides the, uh... No, I was looking for some F1 stuff. I couldn't find a lot of that. Lando, yeah, McLaren. Guys, they're stopping in the showcase. I know that's not here. Mm. Not only PSA 10s. Only PSA 10s. Gem and Joe. Yeah. Me and my uncle bought a Tops Chrome box, so we can get those Ashton packs. It was really painful. No? It was really bad. Not good? Not at all. Hobby box? Yeah. What was the auto? Uh, a Reds pitch at Ashcraft. Graham Ashcraft, all right. It's okay, yeah, I guess. Uh, it was just the base auto, and some guy was ripping next to us, and he was like, oh, you got a Graham Ashcraft auto? And I was like, yeah, he's like, do you want to trade? Uh, I'm a Reds fan. I was like, dude, you can just have it. <laughs> <laughs> what was in the, did you get Nationals packs? Yeah, no parallels. I got a Vargas rookie and a mm. Josh Jumper. Which is, I mean, it's all right, here's the first box of the second case, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure we'll have some of that Star Wars stuff. You see a lot of F1 stuff at retail store? I'm check. I've got some stuff at this retail store here. Just tell me, put some of your F1 in the showcase. Yeah. I don't know how much F1 he has. It's Rafael Devers to 150. I guess I could start buying, like, Pops Chrome F1 Sapphire boxes for like what, 700 a pop or whatever they are now?
Uh, that Devers, by the way, will go to will go to John John B with that one. And our autograph is Bryce Johnson, 136 out of 299. Purple speckle autograph for the Giants. That'll be for Jeremy. So it turns out it's just a regular box. What? The packs? Yes, turns out it's just a regular. Yeah, and I thought, I thought that pack was going to signal something interesting, but no. And then we got a Javier Assad, 80 out of 250 for the Cubs. That'll be for Spencer. All right, next box. Yeah, so that was the National. We, uh, and then I took an extra day off, went to a nice hotel in downtown Chicago, and uh, met some random people at the hotel bar. There was this cool sports bar, like half a block from the hotel. Miller's allegedly opened since 1935, so hung out there. Looks looks like it was still kind of a kind of a locals y sort of spot. So that was cool. Met some random chicks. I guess there was an Ed Sheeran concert that that night. There was a lot going on in town. At this hotel that has tons of like I feel like I saw three different wedding parties. Or bachelorette parties or something like that. Some random dude next to me who said, told me he was the owner of multiple companies. He was in town to buy some more. Not a lot of strange people. But yeah, enjoy some adult beverages. Maybe, maybe, maybe one too many. But managed to get back to my hotel room safe and sound. All bar tabs paid for. All, all credit cards still in my wallet. And I woke up at a reasonable hour, went to the museum, the Art Institute. This Art Institute of, uh, of Chicago is beautiful. It's gigantic. Yeah, that is Chicago. People are awfully nice, though. Especially compared to LA, Midwestern men and women are, are awfully nice. Well, the girls from the girls that I ran into, they were and they were like moms, but they were like young moms, and they went to like Ed, Ed Sheeran shows, and they were they were they, it was like girls' night thing. They were really nice. They were from St. Louis. Can't believe how nice people are in the Midwest. I thought that was a, uh, I thought that was, you know, rumors, lies, <laughs> a uh, regional stereotype, but no, for the most part, people are really cool. And the museum was beautiful. I mean, I, I, I spent hours and hours there and I felt like I still rushed through, uh, I feel like I rushed through the uh, entire joint but saw the Van Gogh exhibit that was there, which was pretty cool. Yeah, John, you think that is actually true about the Midwest? Everybody. Yeah, you hear like that stuff about LA. That might be true for LA too. No, there's a lot. Generally, if you find people that grew up in LA, they're not as, as, as snobby as you think they are. But I don't know, I feel like there's a lot more, well, no, I guess Chicago's a big city too. I feel like there's a lot more people who have an angle in LA, <laughs> you know, but, but yeah, John's been around. John's been around the United States, so I guess I'll take his, I'll take his opinion over most. There's Michael Grove to 199. And there's Matthew Batten, 65 out of 250. All right, Brad. I just got into, I'm like, I'm, I was just on autopilot. I just got into, it's in my head now. So I was just, I was just going with it. John Samuelson with the Padres, with the Friars. 
You get a nice little focus on there. Yeah, the camera is acting weird today. Yeah, goat, exactly, right? Pleasant personality goes a long way. Yeah, I feel like I feel like every city gets their their worst qualities will be magnified by by uh, by people who've never been there. I think that goes for all major cities. And there's a Hunter Brown photo negative. Yeah, they, he, John can barely afford to buy in breaks, and that guy, is, yeah, the guy I saw at the bar, met at the bar, was like, he's buying companies. It seemed very, uh, it seemed, uh, I was not convinced that he was telling the truth. It, he had, the, the companies that he claimed to have owned seemed to be all didn't match up. He was like, I own a, a senior care business and a parking business and a landscaping business and a construction thing. It was just like kind of all over the place. And I was just like, I feel like that's, yeah. I didn't really talk to him that much, but he, was, he, he roped in another couple that was here for a wedding. And I talked to them afterwards and I was just like, how hilarious was that? Very odd. Now don't venture onto the sticks in the Midwest. I have been out to the sticks in the Midwest. Dyersville, Iowa, where the Field of Dreams is. Very quaint town. They were nice too. Stayed in Dubuque, that was a number of Chicago Nationals ago. That was my little post-national uh, thing. Hey, I appreciate it, Dan. I, I, I'm glad that, 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 that we were able to, to, to meet each other. That, that's always the fun part about the Nationals. Sometimes there's a lot of work, but, but it's always nice when you finally get to get to put, put faces with names and stuff like that. Yeah, like I, John, yeah, I feel like he was, he was kind of on social media without being on social media. <laughs> it was kind of funny, but I'm glad I wasn't roped into that conversation. I think he had had a number of, uh, a number of adult beverages, which should not surprise anyone. Nice, add the Rushman refractor for the O's. That's for Sean Maddock and the O's. But yeah, delightful town, delightful people. A lot of good people watching. The museum was beautiful. I have to go back again and then take another spin through that museum. So Chris Sale to 125. And I wanted to pop, I just, there were so many cool things at the Art Institute. I didn't even get to pop out and do like a, a touristy bean sort of thing. Didn't even, did not see the bean. Here's Josh Smith, the other Josh. Rookie Hutto for the Rangers. That's gonna go to Bill. Focus is off today for some reason. What's going on, camera? Why are you being goofy today? Is there something I can fix here? I set the manual focus right there. How about that? 
It's a little too hot. So my hands are usually set right around there. So if I just do that, how about this? Let me know if this if this is better. Because I can't, I gotta look at the cards. I can't, I guess I can monitor myself up there. Is that a little bit better? There's Michael Stefanik for the Angels. Around top loaders. Have not been to the planetarium. Last time, Gilo was in Chicago. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you. So it might not you might not see the action in the background, but we'll at least the action in the foreground will be will be set. But yeah, last time Gabe was in Chicago, you were at a bar, talked to the fan, a FanDuel executive who just happened to be there in the middle of the DraftKings collusion thing. You kind of pressed him about it. He said, sorry, paid for your tab and gave you a $50 credit code thing. Nice. You think this, this is a C-suite guy? Think it, you were talking C-suite or just maybe just a VP? You do like, yeah, you can pretend a camera and stare intensely at the Surratt painting. I did the one on the, the banks of the Seine, the Sunday on the Sunday one. I didn't, I forgot, how, I didn't realize how big that painting was. I guess in my head, well, it's been a minute or two since I've seen the movie. In my head, it was a lot smaller. It's wall size. Yeah, it takes up the whole wall. I thought it was like 11 by 17 inches. It's like 11 by 17 feet. But the, the Van Gogh exhibit that's there talks about Van Gogh and his short time in, um, Van Gogh and his short time in, uh, in Paris with uh, the other dudes, a couple other dudes. I bought a book. Um, but regarding Surratt, it was kind of cool because I was like, well, how the hell do you do that? Like, you don't start with that. He did a lot of sketches in a little, a lot like smaller, um, I guess that's what a lot of the giant pieces, I was like, it makes sense. They do smaller versions of them first. And then they expand out to bigger versions. My, my artistry is limited to, uh, is, 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 is limited to smaller canvas sizes. I can't really do that. I think American Gothic is there. I couldn't find it. I didn't see it. I did see the Picasso, the one of his blue period Picassos that was um, uh, with the uh, guy playing the guitar, which is a pretty cool one. A lot of modern stuff, a lot of post-impressionist stuff, a lot of modern photography. It was pretty cool. So O'Neill Cruz. There's a nice little fountain in the middle, had lunch there. It was a, uh, a delicious Cobb salad. It's fantastic. Nice little lunch. Spent too much at the, at the gift shop, but I, 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 uh, I justify it by saying I'm supporting the museum, which I am. There's a Simeon Woods Richardson, 12 out of 25, orange auto. For the twins, that'll be for Michael Stapleton. You know, he was pretty well dressed, Sheila said. Could be a C-suite guy. Maybe flew to Chicago on the PJ. There's Byron Buxton to 99. Yeah, Artist Suit also has a lot of uh, Claude Monet. A lot of, uh, there's some day guys there too. Um, but uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of water lilies that I've never seen before. So 
always a good time. Next year, yeah, Gilo mentioned this too. Next year, next national is in Cleveland. And the one after that, have they, has that been announced yet? I don't know if that one's been announced yet. I think the, I think the national vendors did vote on it. Well, no, I think Chicago after that, they were voting on 2026. 2024 is Cleveland. 2025, I think, is back to Chicago. And then 2026 is, is, uh, is TBD. I think it might be Chicago again. Oh, they announced it September. I think Atlantic City might be 2026. But I don't know if, I don't know if the majority of the vendors or the, or the visitors like Atlantic City. It's, Atlantic City's fine, but it, it, this is supposed to be a family event. If you're a, uh, a bachelor like myself, John Samuelson, <laughs> Atlantic City's fine. But this is not for, not for, not for me. This is for the families, for kids. And it's just, if you're a vendor, it's just so hard to get into. You're almost guaranteed to either spend more money to fly into Atlantic City you know, and then I guess take a shuttle or something like that into the city proper, or you're driving from Philly or Newark and you're renting a car for the entire week. Yeah, the Wi-Fi wasn't very good. The Wi-Fi is almost never good in any location that we've been at. But maybe they're in, I think Chicago is what did feel a lot better though. But everything's spread out. The, the hotels aren't really, they're, they're kind of farther apart. They're not really clustered together like they are in Chicago. Chicago is just so easy. And there's, and Rosemont has a lot of things to do in the areas. Ooh, this is cool. Mike Trout Relic. Nice. So, kind of hard to see here, but KV082893. If you go to MLB.com, slash authentication, you can punch in those numbers, Stephen Carney, and then you can see what date that game, that jersey was from. And um, you can look up the box score to see if Mike tried anything special that day. It's a player like him, the likelihood is high. There's Ian Happ. But Chicago is super easy to get to. That's, that's why most, most vendors love going to Chicago. Cleveland's, I've never been to the Cleveland one. Nick says that it's actually, it's actually kind of far away from everything. Like downtown Cleveland, I've stayed there, and it's actually kind of nice. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is there. The uh, football stadium is there, and just a couple blocks away, the baseball stadium's there. A ton of hotels. A lot of nice bars and restaurants in that downtown location. Like downtown itself is, is actually pretty nice in Cleveland, but I think it's actually, the convention center is actually a little bit further away. So it takes you maybe like 30 minutes to get into the downtown area via car. 91 out of 150, Simeon Woods Richardson. Blue Ray Wave autograph for the twins. That's gonna be from Michael. There's Andrew McCutcher for the Pirates, purple speckle. To 99, to 299 that is. Yeah, you heard the last Cleveland was not well received, yeah. Although I think they, I think since then, I think Nick was telling me this, that uh, since then I think they have renovated that place extensively. It's still sort of a weird area. I think it's more in a suburb -y kind of area. Maybe it's close to the airport, but there's nothing really around it. I don't know. But yeah, why can't we have one on the West Coast? Uh, the, yeah, I think Nick might. I think for... Um, I think the general answer is that it's too expensive. 
and there's a lot more East Coast dealers um, than West Coast dealers, so a vast majority don't want to go all the way west. Chicago is a good middle point, mid city, second city. Ben, what's going on? No, I think you are off the break. If you look at the break schedule, it'll tell you this is the dual case break. This is the hobby dual case break. But yeah, Chicago Grizzlebees, you're right, it is a great convention city. Yeah, Chicago one is in the suburbs, by the, but there's more stuff around. Like Rosemont, the city itself, has a Gibson's, has a bunch of nice restaurants, ton of hotels, you know, a, a good like little bar, restaurant, family thing kind of location, movie theaters, blah, 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 blah. Kansas City, that could be interesting. It's a, is there a good nightlife? Restaurants around Kansas City afterwards? Things open late? Things are open late in Rosemont too. I think that also helps. But yeah, West Coast I think is usually, I think they're worried about attendance. And I think West Coast convention centers, uh, I, I feel like they're, they're more expensive. So there's a price issue as well and a transportation price issue. Yeah, Minneapolis, Kansas City. Could be nice. Yeah, Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, I wouldn't mind Texas at all. I have some family that used to live in Dallas. They don't anymore, but visited. DC could be good. They used to do it in Baltimore. The Baltimore used to be in the rotation. I feel like it's not anymore. But I, yeah, I, I would love to see, I would love to see something on the West Coast. Well, it's no secret that Fanatics, so it has already been announced that Fanatics is a, uh, has started the events arm of their, uh, of their business, Fanatics Events. We ran a couple of the Fanatics Events guys, and that might, feature some more stuff on the West Coast. There's Leover Paguero, 441 out of 499. Refractor autograph for the Pirates. That's going to be for Brian, Brian W. BW. And from what I understand, at least initially, subject to change without notice, but I think their initial idea for Fanatics events is going to be a little less, little less card showy, and a lot more eventy, I guess. So it's more activities for non collectors. There's Miguel Vargas at 350 for the Dodgers, Matt, with the with the intent of just kind of broadening the sort of sports event landscape, but then ultimately turn into collectors, maybe have some Fanatics Live Breakers there. Yeah, the rotation has gotten smaller over the years. When was the last national on the West Coast? Maybe Anaheim in the late 90s or something like that, early 2000s? Wire they stopped. Yeah, Nick was saying. I think, I think a year before I started with Jaspies, Nick Nick said he went to the convent, the national in Baltimore, 
and he said like it's a it's a fine area but felt like there were a, a little not as not so bad as Atlantic City but he felt like there was little sketchier areas around there harder to walk around at night But yeah, I think Fanatics events will start seeing more, more, uh, more events that may be connected to the hobby. Should be interesting. Could be autograph signings, stuff like that. 2012 was Baltimore, a couple of years before Jaspers. All other than Cleveland, Chicago, Atlantic City. Really, I, I, I think they should. Uh, I think they should uh, do it Chicago every year. Okay, so the last one in, uh, in on the West Coast was 2006 Anaheim. That's what I thought. Yeah, if I had my choice, I mean, if they if they don't want to expand the rotation, I'd just be like, you know what? I did hear some people say Atlanta. They would love to go back to Atlanta. I'd love to go to Atlanta. Never been. But short of expanding the rotation to different cities. I would just love to have in Chicago every year. I don't mind that. I like Chicago. Yeah, I th they're, eventually they're going to need newer venues, right? Ones that can have uh, more modern Wi-Fi setup and modern air conditioning. There's Kettle Marte, John with the Diamondbacks. You have a Chicago team sink. It doesn't matter about the teams. We're not going to see ball games at the National. We just need a good place to, to, to collect, to gather and collect. 93 out of 199. Aqua Auto, Aqua Shimmer, Aqua Wave, Aqua Shimmer, Aqua Wave Autograph, Drew Waters to 199 for Zach and the Royals. Uh, the next dual case is down to 11. We've got time to squeeze one in if nothing else is sold out. If something else sold out before then, then we might not. But we might. There's Ramon Laureano, 399. Did I show you all these cards? I think, yeah, I did. You need a play, I agree, Tyler, you need a place with air conditioning. It's just, especially if when the National is in the middle of the summer, end of July every year, hottest part of the year for the, probably the hardest part of the year, right, for the United States. Ooh, Palm Springs. Is there a nice convention center there? I don't know if there is. I don't mind Palm Springs. A lot of places to stay. V Vegas would be... Hmm. Vegas would be dangerous. Palm Springs Convention Center is a hotel. That might not be big enough then. What's the size of the Louisville Convention Center? Yeah, I don't know how, I'm trying to look up really quick, and I'll look it up later, but I don't know how many square footage the National um, took up this year, but I know they added 200,000 square feet. 
you gotta have a, it's a combination of, can you get there easily? Is the convention center big enough? Are there enough hotels around to accommodate thousands of dealers and vendors? And, and you know, over 100,000 people in hotels over the course of a week. Does it have late night food options? Are things open late? Are there enough places to go to? Enough things to do afterwards? A lot of vendors, you know, flush with cash, maybe looking for, maybe looking for a casino to go to. Obi-Wan, what's going on? Let's see, according to the Chicago, some sort of Chicago uh, website, As of 20, yeah, this was a recent article. I think I, where is that in the article? We need uh, 600,000 square feet of floor space. That's what it was this year. So Louisville's not gonna cut it, Jan, sorry. Apologies to Louisville, we need bigger cities or bigger convention centers. That's why he said the fairgrounds. I'm not sure if it's ever going to be at a fairgrounds. Do they have the power, the electricity, and the internets that we need? Is there enough indoor space? It's never going to be outdoors. And I don't know if we may have the, may not have the Wi-Fi capabilities for everybody. There's Igai Rosario, rookie autograph for the Padres. That'll be for John Samuelson. There have been trade shows there. This isn't just any trade show, though, Jan. I don't think uh, it's not. It's not any city can't really host it. There's Oswald Peraza to 150. Is all, all, is all that indoor space? What's the air conditioning situation there? I've, I've been to some fairs and uh, I've been to many fairgrounds in my life. A lot of those, a lot of that space is usually just giant, you know, I mean, they may as well be like an airport hangar. That airport hangar actually might not be, might not be bad. Yeah, I think so. And then you gotta think about traveling and accommodations, how many direct flights are there from major airports to Louisville on a daily on a daily basis? Are there enough hotels that can accommodate you know the amount of people coming into town for that long? 
Yeah, it might just be, I mean, Chicago really still stands as, as the easiest option. Gigantic airport that can fly from anywhere, multiple flights from anywhere, and like what, 10 plus hotels within a half a mile of the convention center. That can't be, that's, that's unparalleled. All right, next box. Kate Diwali to 299. I, yeah, I mean, no offense to the city of Louisville, Jan, but I just don't think it's big enough. And I think, don't think the infrastructure is as strong enough. Vegas is, a, is, is miles nicer than Atlantic City. Vegas is not like Atlantic City at all, actually. I have not full, pulled any uh, uh, taco fractors. Forgot about those. They're in this set? We got Nick Prado. Rookie auto for the Royals, Zach for the Royals. Might be better, Daniel, by the time the dust settles on Otani's career. Vegas would be awesome. I just think that Vegas is I want to say, like, there's so many conventions there, so much space being taken. I think it's just hard to get into the rotation for a convention of that magnitude. And I, I think price still remains a concern for, you know, conventions aren't cheap. You know, I think, I think a lot of the Vegas convention centers can get a little pricey. But the infrastructure is there. I mean, especially in the middle of the summer, too. I want to see a taco fracture, though. Me too. Vegas does have in and out That in and out though, that's, that's closest to the strip, I think, is an s show. I mean, it's like you gotta, you're, you're in line for an hour um, almost at any time of day, except for maybe breakfast hours. You'd have to drive further into the, into the Vegas suburbs to get to a decent in and out to get food at a decent time. Wait, were the taco facts supposed to be in this set?
<laughs> Jan, part of the uh, the Louisville Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, those are one-off events with with a fraction of the people for the fraction of the time. I wouldn't hold my breath for Louisville. Not for the national. Something else, maybe. Hey, here's James Altman. Nice. 37 out of 50. Playing uh, was in like a two-month slump, I feel like. But I think he's breaking out of it. Let's take a quick look at the stats. Yeah, last 30 games, he's hitting 280, three home runs, 11 RBIs, five stolen bases, you know, an OPS of, what, 785, close to 800. Even better in the last 15 days, 15 games, hitting 326. He's got to maybe, maybe get that, that home run total up, but... Damn. That is pretty nice. Playing well. Have a good one. All right, see you, Michael. Yeah, Dodgers, that's the last spot in Mojo, Matt Lieber. And the Dodgers, Dodger Joe Mojo, congrats. I don't think a, a town like Louisville has ever been considered Grizzlebees, not that size. Almost got, well, an NBA, again, an NBA team is different from, from sustaining a week-long event with hundreds of thousands of people walking through the door and staying the entire week. Joe Ryan, 17 out of 99, we're comparing apples to oranges. Right, yeah, the, the Kentucky Colonels, I'm sure, were drawing hundreds of thousands of people in a week span. It's a cool Otani Technicolor. <laughs> yeah, I tell ya. What else is there to do in Louisville? Yeah, listen, I'm not knocking Louisville. I'm just saying I don't I don't know if the uh, I don't know if the you know if that's the right spot for them for the national. Have you ever been to a national jam recent in the last five years? They've done the national in St. Louis before. That's not a bad option. Is that your food in here or in the... I can just leave, leave it outside. Okay. Thanks, man. Yeah. Time, timing that order perfectly. I think they have a different kind of cardinal in Louisville, though, Grizzlebees, right? In Louisville? Cost ends up being a big thing. Convention centers, especially more modern ones, are are not are not uh, are not cheap. And there's like vendors that have been going to the national for decades. We're on the we were we just wrapped up the 43rd national, so there's been vendors there that have been there since the first one. And I, I 
think, I don't know, maybe they have some more favorable pricing locked in or something like that. Are you sure you need anything? No, I'm good, sir. All right. And we'll uh, see you tomorrow. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, the National won't be back in Chicago for two years, so I'm sure that's plenty of time for, for the Donald E. Stevens Convention Center to, to uh, make the adjustments they need. Yeah, none that I've noticed just yet. There's Jordan Alvarez, Aqua to 199. Not, I feel like those would, those would be different enough where they would just jump out at me. But all cards ship. If I happen to miss one, you'll, and you'll get it. Here's our second to last autograph. Connor Capel, 142 out of 299. Purple speckle autograph. Purple speckle? Yeah, speckle autograph. For the A's, that'll be for Jarrett. We got a blue Anthony Rendon to 150 for the Halos. That'll be for Steven. And the 24th box coming up. Good luck. Oh, talk refractors, Gabe is reporting, are number to five. So, yeah, so there is. So, no wonder. Wow, we have not pulled one. I feel like we've done a lot of breaks. We're, this is dual case, dual hobby case, pick your team six. We're about to rip Jumbo 11 later tonight after my break. Check the schedule. So you're telling me we haven't, we haven't seen one of those yet? It's crazy. We want tacos. All right, well, there's another dual case down to 11 teams left and another jumbo case down to seven teams left. We, we got time to squeeze in, but we got time to squeeze in both of those, I think, if you want. Close the month strong before we go to August. I got to come up with a sans serif font for you font fans out there. I got to come up with a sans serif font. And we were talking about the national so much we didn't even get, maybe I'll do that in the jumbo break, but we'll, we'll speak a little more extensively about the, uh, the trade. The trade deadline, is that tonight? Or tomorrow? Tomorrow? I think tomorrow, August 1st, midnight, East Coast. So 9 p.m. West Coast time will be the trade deadline. Let's see if there's been some fun deadline stories of a contract didn't get didn't get faxed in or mailed in on emailed in on time. The PDF didn't attach. We've heard some of those stories before. Let's see if there's a little more action happening at the trading deadline. We'll talk more about that in the jumbo case. That's coming up a little bit later. After I wrap this up, we're gonna, we're gonna take a quick little break. We'll do a jumbo case. And we'll do a filler pack. And then hopefully by then we'll have something else sold out. Because I think if I'm looking at my give or take 15, 20 minutes, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll still have at least two and a half hours, if not a little bit more, to do some more breaks. So still got plenty of time to squeeze in another one of these. Maybe a jumbo, another jumbo version. There's a Zan, what's this? What's that Brett Beatty? Here's Xander Bogarts, 42 out of 50 for the Friars. That's John and the, and the Friars. Look at this, Brett Beatty. What is this called, Gilo? 
Doesn't seem to be numbered. I'm, this has got to be a short print though, right? Radiating rookies? That's pretty cool. That's BW, B dubs, with the New York Mets. That's pretty cool. Maybe a case hit, perhaps? We would love to do that hit parade baseball, Jimmy. Always down to do some hit parade baseball. That's down to some full spots and the last filler. Torkelson might be numbered, it's not. Not a case, okay, Jan saying it's not a case hit, but Jason has pulled some. There's Cody Ballinger to 199, Aqua Lava. Cubs saying they're not gonna trade him. Their, their, their playoff odds have improved in the last week or so, and I think that's changed their mind. And there's Ji Huan Bei. Going to B Dub, Brian W. and the Pirates. And that was our final autograph. Any, any low numbered cards? A Taco Fractor before? No, no Taco Fractor, but a gold Christian Yelich, 28 out of 50 for the Brewers. Yeah, the radiating was not numbered. And that's the break. That's 2023 Topps Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition, two case break. That's 24 total boxes in the books. So here is a quick autograph and other special card recap. This was from the first case. It's Gunnar Henderson, some nice stuff here, a lot of nice color, and that Otani Ultra Violet. You're turning violet, Violet. Here was the second hobby case. Got that radiating rookie just now, the Altman Gold. Some, a lot of nice color and some nice autographs here. We've got a relic, Mike Trout relic. Corbin Carroll refractor, and we started off with that Bryce Johnson. And there you go, gang. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, back in LA, back from Chicago, and ripping stuff with you here on a Monday. I will see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.